trying to get a round of applause going here. What's happening here? Oh, there you go. Yeah. Woo! Put the right fader up for these sorts of things. Good evening, everybody. John Agat, top right. Anna, top uh, bottom right. Certainly on my screen. And Head Gardner Lee McGrady, bottom right of your screen. Thank you, Louise, for being here. And thank you, OLP2. And we know others are watching. Please tell us who you are and where you are. And if you have any questions for the Head Gardener and the uh, Get Out and Grow team here, please pop them in the chat. Or you can even call. Do you know what I'm going to do? Oh, Darren's here as well. Not often we see Darren in the afternoon. It's great to see you. Great to hear that news from you earlier on today, uh, our favourite DJ. What I'm going to do, uh, um, and I'll come back to you three and ask you how you're doing, and you can um, let us know and let everyone know uh, how your new year is going so far. I am going to go throw the phone lines open on the biggest phone in in Europe. We're going to have a bit of that sort of action this afternoon as well. So there we go. Ode to Joy, the theme tune of the EU and, of course, the uh, Europe's the, the, the organisation that throws the EU into the shade, the Good Morning Europe phone in as well. Head Gardener McGrady, you have a smile on your face. Are you glad to be on the biggest phone in Europe? Are you allowed to say it's the biggest phone in Europe? <laughs> Are you allowed to say that? Who's going to stop me? Fair enough. Yeah. OK. That's um, permission. Yes, I'm sure some I, I'm sure we can attribute that quote to somebody or we should just always do little bunny ears. Biggest phone in Europe. <laughs> Can you think of a bigger one? Let me put it to you like that. Eurovision? Possibly. No, it's a phone thing. No, it isn't actually, is it? Unless you... phone in. It's not a phone in Eurovision, no. is it? No. Okay. Um, maybe we can help uh, Darren this evening as well, just deciding what to eat for tea. It's not a cookery programme, as head gardener McGrady sometimes. Fish fingers and custard. Fish fingers and custard <laughs> is the first serving suggestion. Um, let's let's find out how the team are doing. How's the new year going so far? Anna, how are you? Is it cold and chilly in Devon this evening? Um, it's uh, not. Uh, I was going to say not not too bad. I haven't actually been out um, and about today, but it's, it's it's about seven degrees currently at the moment. But um, it's uh, it certainly was a wet weekend though. I think it pretty much rained. Um, I can't remember Friday, but it certainly rained uh, incredibly hard on Saturday and Sunday as well. So uh, didn't didn't venture out a lot at the weekend. But, uh, but it, was my, it was my first week back as well last week from uh, the Christmas break and that sort of thing. So uh, yes, just about getting used to the um, activities and uh, all of that kind of stuff. So I think it's back to a full week this week with keyboard and yeah and that sort of thing. And stuff. Uh, good stuff. Yeah. Anna. How is twenty three going so far for you? Um, yeah, I think it's um, uh, compared to the end of 2022. Um, uh, yeah, much, uh, much 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 better, I think. So um, yeah, just seeing what the year brings, and um, um, yeah, keeping busy. And so, do you feel fully recovered from your bout of the lurgy over Christmas? Um, I I, do, I think I yeah, I've just about recovered from it now. I think yes, first uh, first time. So um, yeah, didn't uh, didn't do an awful an awful lot for a bit, but um, yeah, managed to. Um, yeah, managed to get through it, and fortunately, it was uh, well enough um, for my, my first day back, which is good. So, uh, well yeah, done. Sort of, well yeah. done. Whatever it is you're doing, keep up the good work. John Agat, also in Devon in the UK this evening. How are you, sir? Yes. How's 23 going for you? Oh, I guess, yeah, okay, not too bad, not too bad. Trying to get back into some sort of routine. Um, <clears throat> quite tricky after the very strange routine of Christmas. What routine? Yes. Well, that's yes, exactly. Just everything's very odd, and uh, yes. Anyway, we're wishing you and all our viewers the very best for twenty three. Let's see how the head gardener's doing. Uh, how's life in the professional gardening world for twenty three, Lee? Oh, it's going well, on it? Yeah. Well, I didn't take the time off at Christmas. I had a um, two or three days at Christmas and two or three days at New Year, and I worked the rest of it. Right. That's very Portuguese, actually, isn't it? Well, it's not, actually, because everybody else was bloody off. The roads were dead quiet. I didn't see any other... My normal competitors that I see on our normal route and the cafes and all the see in were yeah. all dead and everyone else had took the week off. Wow. From, from the week in between Christmas and New Year, there was nobody yeah. else out. Yeah. Society is changing for those fancy Lisboetas there. Look at this. Gardening is... Thank you, Lee, and good to see you and all the best to you for this coming year. Uh, gardening is cheaper than therapy and you get tomatoes. Or tomatoes, depending on where you're from in the world. That's right, isn't it, Lee? Um, good for you, and you get fruit as well. Well, I've never, I've, I've never had depression. 
Okay, and you, maybe you would. I've, you... I've never had a bad day, so yeah, it must be. It must be something good about it. Wow, never had a bad day. How about that? Um, Louise Botara Buono to all Gumpers. Thank you, Louise, and thank you for everything you did for us with all the lovely pictures you shared and, and input and questions for 2022. Similarly with OLP, uh, Happy New Year to you, Bondi, and my fellow gardeners as well. Mm -hmm. Already got a round of applause. John, are you all right? Tired. Okay, sorry, man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to disturb oh, you. Um, the Dara J, we had the round of applause there, and Don's in as well um, with a big clap for Carl. First thing in the evening, who doesn't like a big clap first in the, in the evening? Don, where have you been? It's lovely to see you here, John. I think you might want to voice this yourself. Yes. Uh, so, if you forgot to let Anna uh, know about your question or have only just thought of one, let us know in the comments, either on Facebook or on YouTube. <laughs> Phone in with it. You can phone in because this is the or biggest phone in. Because, yes, you can yes. you could ring us up yes, as sorry. well. Let me make sure that um, the number is on the screen uh, so that people can call what has been called the biggest phone in in Europe. How about that? That's better, isn't it? Um, okay, um, we have uh, T Duck as well, of course, with those lovely quotes. Howdy, gardeners, says the T Duck. And uh, not a cookery program for Darren. Uh, maybe we can, we can improve on fish fingers and custard for you. Not mm -hmm. a cook. You can't improve on, improve on fish fingers and custard. Have you actually had fish fingers and custard? No, it's a Doctor Who reference. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, yeah. Sorry. yeah, from yeah, the Matt Smith, first Matt Smith, <laughs> Matt Smith's first episode that, that was. was. Yes, this to you, Hoovians. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Not a cookery program, but having cabbage, Galaga Lisa. I, I have to say, I was looking out of the window and I was admiring how good our cabbage is. Forgot all about it. And there it is. It's grown without any care or attention. Beautiful cabbage at the moment, this time of year in Portugal. And potatoes <laughs> from the Horta with Javelis. Oh, that sounds like a good dinner, didn't it, Lee? A bit of pig, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A wild boar, isn't it? Um, yeah, and yeah. someone said that Christmas is not a holiday, but a deadline. It is sad, isn't it, sometimes, when we when we get down to seeing it in that way. But, yes, I can appreciate that. Uh, Matty's here as well. But not happy growers. How's that aloe plant of yours, Matty? How are you doing? What are your plans for 2023? And everybody here, what are your gardening, not resolutions, we don't do resolutions, your hopes, your dreams, your visions for 2023? What do you want to do in the garden? If a plant is so sad, do the other plants photosympathize with it? Yes. Okay. Yes, they actually do. They do photosympathize with each other. Tell us more, Lee. What do you mean? Um, there's been there's been studies done uh, where plants communicate with each other. Um, they 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 manage to produce uh, a kind of a hormone that's, that's released into the soils and into the air. So when one plant gets diseased, it can let plants in the area know that it's diseased and they can build up an immune system to it. Uh, so, yeah, they do photosynthesize. They do uh, chat the way the when another plant is sick. So, yes, very they do. Very good. They do. So there you go. Dad joke has been turned into scientific fact tonight. <laughs> College. It's, it's, it's actually a fascinating rabbit hole to go down. I bet if, you start, if you start YouTube in it, it will send you mental. You, you, you just won't see plants in the same way. Oh, my goodness. Okay, challenge on there for anyone who wants to do that. Head gardener, never had a bad day. Best mate replies. That's Carl H. Challenge accepted. See you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I've, had a, I've had a lovely lunch with Carl H today, and it, it was a nice day today. Yeah, it's, what, it's just what I needed. A really shitty weather start to the morning. Yeah. And then a clock in the afternoon and a nice, a nice lunch. Very good. I try harder tomorrow, Carl H. My hope for 2023 is actually to find and buy my garden here in Portugal. Ah, okay. Um, that's your plan. That's a good plan. That's a big, bold plan too. Uh, happy birthday today as well to our mate Jason Hall. Jason. He's celebrating his birthday today, right? Well, he won't be listening because I've just I've just spoke to him and he's got some mates over for me and I've just phoned him up and sung him happy birthday. Has just to about one of his friends. One or two <laughs> bottles of his own wine made on the Kinta there possibly today? He was a little bit caught when I spoke to him, yeah. He was a little, was a little bit going. That's well, happy happened. birthday, Jason, if you're watching the repeat. Yeah, happy birthday, mate. And thank you for your a couple of appearances. Hope to do another with you uh, this for, for the spring. It'd be amazing with what you're, you've got going on over there. And, and, uh, he's actually, he's, he's, his little commercial garden is coming on brilliantly. It looks fantastic. He's Has put a Matt lot of been there? Matt's been a few, yeah. Okay, Matt's so been 
he's inspiration to Matty then with what Matty's trying to do. Hi, Matty, says Louise. I'm planting more onions, leeks and garlic over the next two months. Also starting pea plants as well. OK, should we go to that first question then, Anna? Um, get get your questions in, please. And we have a first a visual one, don't we, Anna? We're sort of like science fiction. Ah! <laughs> Oh yes. Um, what? What, yes. Um, this one is from uh, Martin. Um, I uh, he said he's in central Portugal, but that's the only information I got. Um, this one's with a photo as well. Hercules beetle grub found in the compost of our aloe vera potted plants when the dog knocked it over today. Uh, today being thirtieth of December. Um, it's it's friend, not foe. Apparently, uh, confirmation that they are good to be put back into the pot would be good, please. Technically, any beetle, like the Hercules beetle, which is a carnivorous beetle, is a friend. But do you really want them in your pots inside the house or on the terrace? And the birds love them. So if you put it out on a stone, if you put it on a wall, if you put it out on the patio, it won't be there for two minutes because the birds will swoop in and take it away. Right. Um, the flight of but, his life. Yeah. Uh, if you cut the cross, any sort of big bug like that in your, especially in your potted plants around the house, I think it's always safer to take them out because you don't really want them in your in your pots. And they don't really do well in pots either. So take them out, feed them to the birds, or squish them, feed them to the birds. Okay. Um, you the said bugs. carnivorously. What are they? What, what carnivorous are they? beetles. Yeah, you, well, you get, you get two real types of beetles. 99% of beetles are carnivorous, they'll eat anything that moves. And uh, then you get a very small minority of beetles which are herbivore and will destroy your plants and your root systems. But it's the bug form where you have to be careful, even though they're carnivorous and will eat the insects you don't like. While they're in the bug form, they can destroy root systems and they can chew through the roots. So oh. you don't bring them in your pots. Yeah. Okay. So when you say carnivorous, they're basically eating other beetles they're not carrion type or will they eat anything they can, they oh, they'll can... Delete absolutely. Be beetles are ferocious i'll delete absolutely anything and i've right. been i've been bit on occasion by beetles and when right. they get you with the pincers in your finger it's actually quite painful and it, it tends to swell up and up a little bit um oh, oh, when they've got to the beetle stage rather than when they're yes, in the yeah, stage. Okay. yeah when, when they're at the beetle stage to become carnivorous and they start to do, to kill and eat everything which is great but yeah. as a bug form, you don't really want them in your pots because they will chew through your roots. Okay. You can, you can always say you've had the beetles on your terrace, can't you? I, if the beetles are playing on my terrace, I'd pull the shutters down. My goodness. Okay, that's quite controversial. Okay. <laughs> Victoria's here. I think we've dealt with that, haven't we, Anna, would you say? Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, that's great. I think it's a magnificent picture. They do look pretty. Um, I mean, yeah, they do look like a tasty snack um, to a bird. There, uh, my sorry, my um, my monitor just said it's going to switch itself off any minute. So forgive me if I suddenly disappear. Um, but I think I've dealt with that now. So thank you very much for that, Martin and Beverly. Have we got another question from you, um, Anna, or via you? Um, we've got one from. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing the uh, the, the name. Uh, um, Artemisia. We've got. Um, who um, I don't know where abouts they are, but they just said, um, hello, do you know where I can buy a, I think it's a Dombea tree, I think they were mentioning. Yeah, do you yeah. recognise the name? I, I, I do. It, it's, it's the Latin name, and I can't think what the common name is because everyone refers to them as that here in Portugal, and they're not really well known in England. But right. uh, again, I'm going to recommend the same company I, I tend to always recommend because they are nationwide, and it's VI Plants. Yes. Um, you're never more than 50 kilometers away from one. And they do have a big stuff symptom there. Um, well, they're very beautiful, aren't they? If you if you if you contact in advance, if you phone your nearest VI plants, if they don't have them in your store, they will get them in for you. They'll ship them from another store for you. They are really quite helpful like that. Good job. Okay, that's really great. Really helpful. Dombea, sometimes a plant, sometimes a tree. I've seen it referred to as and they, they provide a lovely pom-pom of colour um, hanging from the tree or the bush there. Isn't that kind of not my favourite. If, if, you keep, if, you, if you let them develop into a tree, they're quite pretty. But if you try to prune them, they can look bare for most of the year. Oh, I see. Uh, um, yeah, I'm not a keen fan on the, on the shrub. 
type plant, right. but the, as, a, as a tree, if you look at it as a standalone plant, they are quite beautiful. Yeah. So it's looking a little bit like a head of hydrangea sort of flowers, isn't it, in a way, but uh, not, not as good to have around the garden. And, and, and that's the other problem as well, is they seem to shed a lot of petals. They, if you get a heavy wind or a lot of rain, it will shed. And I've seen some that do brilliantly in sandy soils and others that really struggle to grow. So they could be a bit finicky, but they are very, very pretty and not cheap. You want a decent oh, okay. sign? They are not cheap to buy. What, that, what do you mean by that exactly? Um, because they're not sort of a standard plant, the, 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 the growth rate isn't really quick, so it costs the um, it costs the growers more money to, to to grow them to a good two meter or a meter and a half size to sell. So they ask for a bit more money for them. So anything over two meters, you're looking at paying around ninety euros for. My goodness, um, thank you. they don't always take very well when they've been transplanted. So yeah, you're kind of risking your money. It's not it's not it's not a plant I've ever been very confident with. If you okay. get what I mean, I yeah, kind of. Enough. I kind of give it with a warning, you know. I'm getting yeah, warned, yeah. but it yes. doesn't do well. It's not my fault, kind of. And Comment. your recommendation is to uh, go to VI Plants uh, in Portugal. Yes. They're called VI Plants. It's a, it's a well-established company in Portugal and uh, all over from, from Braga all the way down to the Algarve. So, all right. I'll yeah. see if I can get a link up on the screen. Um, and uh, why? another question then, why did the gardener fall in a hole? Because he couldn't see that well. Because it was after lunch and he had a few too many beers at lunchtime. That could happen. As could something untoward with a chainsaw and another vera plant, by the way. Do you want to address this, Lee? Oh, me and Cal were, when Cal when Cal first bought his house, uh, he's got a terraced garden. And at the top we he had some uh, big alvera plants. Yes. And we decided to take the chainsaw to them to cut out the the lower the lower shoots. I've talked about this before. Uh, we, we both had a reaction to the uh Oh okay. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. ended up showering. Not together, but definitely showering to wash them. <laughs> <laughs> so itchy we ran in and showered together. Um, I, don't so think, I don't think Carl's had jolly days work with me since. <laughs> funny, funny that, isn't it? Now you had a reaction to the particulate that was thrown you away by the aloe vera tree because that, that's weird, isn't it? Because normally aloe vera is very good for all sorts of things. Well, I've never used that on my skin because I'm very sensitive to skin. Um, but for Cal to have the same reaction at the same time, when using a chainsaw might not be the best idea. <laughs> True, it, it would have it would have shredded it into a million little particles, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, there's there's um, Lee's plant recommendations. Very nice looking website there. So not just the plants, but all sorts of. Uh, um, paraphernalia to do with planting, uh, by yeah, the look it, very attractive. It's, website. it's very much an English garden center, but without the cafe in sight, <laughs> uh, and the cheese and the cream cakes. They, they do it in a very English style of garden center. Oh, okay. I, I've been to three different, different ones and I've enjoyed my visit to each of them. Although, cool, yeah, the, the staff aren't very clued up, they're just girls that work there. But the voice okay. is... All right. And there's a music button. Should I press it? No. Let's see, see what happens. No, it's not. <laughs> okay. it might be the Beatles. Do we get a copyright on YouTube? You know you can't play. Well, I, I, could, I could turn it off very quickly, but I imagine <laughs> the bots are quicker than I am. Okay, good good advice, Eddie. Uh, VI Plants, I'll also put the uh, link in um, for their website as well uh, to go in there. So thank you for that. I think that's all the questions that we've had in, right, Anna? Um, I've spotted a couple more coming in. I think we've got. Um, I've just seen um, Matty OL, uh, OLP and Paul Louise Lotty have sent a question in as well. Um, um, Matty is saying uh, it might have been said or asked before, but what uh, what is now or in the next two weeks to be planted in a semi raised bed? Um, and he says here in Pombal, and uh, yes, uh, I will go to co op and ask as well. Well, he's, he, he obviously watches the show enough to know that. That's what I'm going to recommend. But uh, I noticed onions have come on sale again. Uh, although mine haven't really budged in the last few weeks. Um, so whether they're just prepping. Garlic should be prepping now for going in. Um, I suppose you could start 
you could start your carrots about now, but again, go to your local cooperative, see what plugs they've got in, and start from that. All right, there you go, and that's what so Louise that's was about, and that's a completely different weather system to what we have here in Lisbon. Yeah, how has your weather been in Pombal? I, I imagine it's been pretty wet over that way, like it has been in a lot of parts of Portugal. But how is it, Matty? Uh, Louise, uh, as she said before, is planting onions, leeks, and garlic over the next two months. Go on, Lee. Grape vines are coming off sale at the moment as well. I know Matt is a bit keen on getting some grapes going. So yeah. grape vines are coming into the co-ops for sale at the moment. That's just after Christmas, I've seen the first few coming in. Well, that's so, interesting. So grape vines obviously very popular in Portugal. You're yeah. buying something that's about knee high or hip high when you're buying from a garden centre? Uh, you're looking at sort of 10 inches of root and less than a foot of shoe on top at the moment. Okay. Uh, and a kind of a dormant stem, so there's no greenery on them. Right. Uh, so just be a bit careful when you're buying them. If you can take a little pocket knife and just trim the top, just to make sure that they're, uh, the green inside is a good bit oh, of that. Okay. Yeah, because you could be being sold a paperweight, couldn't you? Well, it's, it's, it's difficult It's difficult this time of year to select plants that have got no leaves on. You know, So you're kind of already taking a bit of a guess at it. Yeah. And the way that they're pruned... And because they're dry when you buy them, the weight difference isn't there as it would be in the summertime. Oh, interesting. No moisture. Yeah. 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 There's no moisture in them at the moment. They're both dry. So I take a little pocket knife and just snick into it and just make sure there's a bit of green and a bit of bark before you pay for them. Oh, OK. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> so, All right. Top tips. Top tips of, well, I learned this by buying dead plants. <laughs> you know, all honesty. The hard um, way. <laughs> yeah. Plants in the hard way. Yeah. Okay, superb. Um, we've got. Be, I'm having a few pictures sent in, which is fantastic. Uh, do feel free to call in as well on the number that you can see on the bottom of the screen if you'd like to talk to the head gardener and the Get Out and Grow team. Um, he's just, oh, okay. He's just. I don't know what he said there, but I, I think he needs to go and do. Well, he's a gardener. He answers the call of nature in all sorts of ways. Maybe that's what he's doing. Uh, beetle grubs. Take them out of the pots and throw them in the compost heap. Says Louise. Not a snack for the birds in Louise's garden, by the sound of it. Maybe a snack for a little mouse or something like that in the compost heap. Um, and I will star your question, which is a great one, OLP. Do cities, towns and villages in Portugal have community gardens? That is a great question. Oh, he needed another beer. Um, yeah, it's a <laughs> Okay, I didn't know what you said. Um, I'm just going for a... Um, do, do cities, towns and villages in Portugal have community gardens, Lee? If so, how can you find out about them? Is there a network of communal gardens in Portugal? Is it a tradition well, here? I know them. I know they're becoming more and more popular, and I know that they're starting to encourage people to grow in veg, what we would call allotments in England. Yeah. yeah. Um, in, in the past, as far as I'm aware, the allotments didn't really exist as a as a thing, and people would just grow on the side of the highway. <laughs> and, and I've seen it on the side of motorways. I've seen embankments with cabbages in them. Yes. It's the bizarrest of things. Yeah. Um, but I know my local allotment was started four years ago. And I think there's about 35 or 40 pictures on it. So, you know, different growing areas. And I was out near um, oh, uh, Cas Cascade shopping a few days ago. There's a new one just started there. I've been watching them develop it. Um, so it's becoming more of a thing, having small private allotments owned by the government um, and I know that there's two community gardens in Lisbon that I've, I see regularly on Facebook um, so I presume Facebook would, would be the best way to find the ones in your area Yeah, and they do, they do call them community gardens as well or community grow, I can't think what the Portuguese word was that they used community for dad. community dad I suspect community dad uh, yeah, but they had a word. They had a word for it in Portuguese. But I know the Facebook page is Community Garden in Lisbon. Great. Okay. So yes, is the answer to that then OLP. Um, yes. And I, I think you I know, think, the... I think it's a very new idea. Uh, but also in, in, in the villages, people tend to grow together as well, don't they? There are you know, like in the way that people buy land to put eucalyptus trees on, that's often done as a communal effort, isn't it? Yeah, but like, like I was trying to say before, in the villages, I think they just if there was a bit of empty space, they would just do it. And nobody, nobody yeah. complained. Yes. But now I think the government are trying to encourage people to do it in more of a uh, organised way. An organised way, yeah, in specific places. Yes. Why would they do that? Do you think? Well, 
I don't think I like the idea of people growing on the side of the motorways to start with. Yeah, uh, sense. Uh, and it's access to water as well, which I must admit confuses me when I see old guys walking up the iron shoulder of the dual carriageway with 10 litre bottles of water under his arm to go and feed his plants in the summer. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I know. You, yeah, I see him doing it all the time. But in the local uh, place, they've got taps and tap water yes. or, or, or well water. So, you know, it, it's just to encourage you to be less guerrilla garden and more communal garden. Fair enough. Okay, I was just thinking the worst there. But, yeah, for that, you make some fair points there. Um, Victoria, my gorgeous Collius has dropped babies in other pots. So cute and cheeky. So what is co Collius or Collius? I, I don't know. I don't know, to be honest. Is it, uh, is it is she using a Latin name? Is it a Portuguese? But Google it. I'm going to do that right away. And, uh, Anna, have you seen, have you seen the other it. All right. Yeah, I'm sure you will. Uh, what about you, Anna? Have you seen anything else that uh, takes your fancy in the in the chat? Um, uh, not so far. I I I, had, I was just going uh, checking through the questions. I, I had the um, question from Paul and Louise um, about the yes about the lavender um, dying back. But I couldn't I couldn't remember if, if we just asked that one and I hadn't. Oh yes. no, we, no. What was that one? We didn't we didn't address that. Um, uh, any reason why four year old ground planted lavender will die back three in a row and the first one is totally dead, other two are fine? Ah, uh, that could that could definitely be too much water. Um, okay, it, it's that time of year as well. And I know there are certain species of lavender that like to shed and then regenerate. And the world is if you get too much water, it looks like they're shedding, but they're actually dying. Oh. Um, so it might be bad news of too much water where they've just got rotted root systems. You'll know by giving a little bit of a pull. So if you give it, even in the early stages of dieback, if you give it a little pull, it'll come right out the ground because there's nothing holding it in. Oh dear, okay. If you give it a little pull and you can't put it out the ground, especially after four years, um, give it a trim, give it a heavy trim, and then let it rejuvenate from the bot from the base up. I mean, you want to be leaving just a few inches above the soil. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it's, it's it's a it's been a bad year for lavender and because it's, it's been it's, such a, because it's been such a wet year. Yeah, it's kind of the way that they grow because they grow out from the main stem and they grow up like a, a an up to a numberella. Yes, um, and once it gets damp underneath, it never really dries out, and you get root rot. And it just devastates them. Okay, yeah. all right. There you go, Louise. May well be um, overwatering there, sadly, and yeah, with a lot of um, rainwater as well. That may be a problem there. Yeah. Um, so Don was asking on the beetles and the caterpillars: Can you send uh, the chickens in uh, for the for the bugs in that way? You've got to be careful with chickens around your veg garden. <laughs> So, so they get they get a little bit aggressive. They will take the caterpillars, but they'll take half the leaf with it. Um, yes. And sometimes they just take your leaf as well, just for the hell of it, because chickens will eat anything. They will, won't they? Yeah, so true. Okay. Um, Gene, well, thank I'll, you. I'll oh, okay. So thank you for the picture of your backyard uh, there, Gene. But I can't download it for some reason, so we may have to carry that over for next week. Congratulations, though, on your arrival to Mon Carapaccio in the south of Portugal. Great news to have you here and watching live with us. Fantastic. Okay, uh, Don, thank you for that. Thank you, Louise, for your question. Um, there's the link to VI Plant, uh, the store that uh, that Lee likes to use. Oh, about I garden plants. I just, I just, I don't like to use them, but they are oh. good. I don't get a discount there, you see. I get a discount if oh. you're smaller. Okay. I prefer to go to the smaller garden centers where I know I'm helping people in my community. Yes. If I need something specific, I will use VI plants because they're, they're quite good. Yeah. Fair point. Okay, yep. Always good to use the local market and the local co-op, uh, but if all else fails, then that's an option for you there. Uh, plant that button. That's a nice take on the smashing the like button, planting the like button. Um, what, says Matty, oh, sorry, wet the last days, but very sunny today. Uh, more sun expected for Thursday and Friday. It's a beautiful day on the Silver Coast today, like what I would call a proper Portuguese day 
It was very good. Uh, those chickens are organised, says John. Oh, John, are you have you been a bit of a chicken keeper in your time? Oh no, organized? it's just um, just whenever you talk about chickens, it makes me think of chicken run the film. Ah uh, yes, yeah, <laughs> uh, and they and it's T ducks right as well. They do see the garden as a buffet, and why wouldn't they? Uh, they do like to to help themselves. Look at this. Coleus was a very popular house plant in the 1970s, and here it is, Lee. Um, that is a pretty plant, isn't it? With its variegated leaves. Oh um, yes, that is nice. Yeah, of course, and they are they are widely available here in Portugal as well. Okay, and that's going to drop its babies like a spider plant would, by the sound of it. No, it, it, yeah, it's going to be more like um, a geranium, I imagine. To be honest, I think it's going to be more of a, a, of a seed that's fell. But they do produce seeds, so oh, I think it's okay. more of a seed that's produced, or it's going to be a root shoot. Yeah, um, well, that's real pretty. Thank you, Victoria. Yeah, they, they, they plant. Again, yeah. some, something else to the away. They're, they're a house plant, but you don't really see them in the garden so much. But the variegation, the, the amount of varieties there is beautiful, isn't well, it? The, the, you the, kind of find the most, the most variegations in plants like that are at some point been a disease that's been encouraged to grow and stay within the plant. Is that right? When, when you get variegated laurels and you get variegated privet and stuff like that, then it, it was a disease at one point and they've took a liking to it and developed it to to keep that colour variation. Look at that. Um, All right. I just chanced upon a lovely website, Colourful Plants for Shade Gardening, plants that bloom in the shade, and that would, of course, include the coleus there. Thank you very much. Uh, and thank you for your input on that as well, Louise. Um, Anna, see, are you seeing anything else there? I can, I can talk a little bit about going down the shade route for plants if you want. Because that's a quite interesting thing. Well, yeah, yeah, if, you're looking, if you're looking for a plant to go in, in shade, you want the plant with pale leaves or pale variations on leaves because they absorb more sunlight. Because the darker oh. green plants, they do brilliantly in bright sunlight. And the lighter coloured or the variegated plants do really well in the shade because they yeah. can absorb more sunlight in that, in that environment where it's not perfect for them um, gotcha. so yeah i would always suggest variated plants especially pale variated plants go into the shade so they don't burn off the same makes a lot of sense so that's a nice little guide there according to the uh, their their leaf color coleus grows prolifically in the shade in the southern u.s I have a gorgeous huge one in a pot here send a pic victoria all very well teasing us like that um lots of heavy persistent rain in central lost a couple of sections of terraced walls due to rain sodden terraces says louise um, Ipema says that uh, there was 250 mill millimetres of rain. Yeah, I think one one day that all of the, the predicted rainfall fell in one day, didn't it, for the whole month, I think. And it was supposed to be the hottest December ever on record as well, right, Lee? I don't know about the hottest, but it was definitely the wettest. I, I yeah. mean, it, it was it was like being back in Manchester. Um, I, I, we had pre-Christmas... I don't think I had a dry day for a month. It was just ridiculous. It was it was terrible. And yeah. you've seen on the news, the, the city here was flooded. And at weekend, Porto had the same thing, didn't they? They, they had terrible floods at weekend. The, the pictures so, were incredible of Porto, of the rain pouring down Salbento Station. It was incredible. And, uh, and we've, we've, talk, we've talked about this before as well. But when you get rain like we've had, which people are trying to put down to climate change, but, you know, it's going to wash away all, all that surface soil, all the nutrients you get washed out of it, which is why we've said in the past when you're terraced in, to always do your trenches across the terrace and not down the terrace. Yeah, um, it, yeah it's been a terrible year for it. And okay. Planning and preparing for the rain is going to be something we have to look, look at in the future. But, uh, However, the, um, the drought situation is all but over, and you'd expect it to be, wouldn't you, after what you just said? Well... Because I, 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 we know from experience, from April, there's going to be there's going to be issues with water shortages, <laughs> and okay. then we turn the sprinklers down, and the yeah. price of water never goes down. Yeah. Um, come come August, we'll be panicking again. We've got no water in the systems. What are we like, us human beings? Okay. Oh, about garden plans. We'll register a fire for Thursday and Friday and burn all leftover tree prunings. Well done, Matty, doing the right thing there, letting the local bomberos know that you're having a fire. Um, so burning those tree prunings to clear the garden and then prep the raised bed with compost. Nice job. 
Um, thanks, Lee, says Louise. We'll try that tomorrow. A little tug on the lavender, see if it's yeah. still alive there. And uh, Pete's in as well. Good evening, Pete. I have just repotted my mango and pomegranate. Any advice on what the best place to put them? And my dragon fruit. Lots of exotics he's growing there, all inside due to frost directly or slightly shady for Pete's uh, mango, pomegranate and dragon fruit, Lily. Well, I, I hope Pete throws the right compost for them uh, because pot, 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 for putting on those exotics, uh, the quality of compost in Portugal isn't the best. Right. And if you're going to pot on this time of year, the compost looks great. But in a few weeks when the sun comes out, that compost might look very dry if you've not bought the right sort of stuff for it. Um, so it's sometimes we're spending the money on a decent compost, especially if you're growing on exotics like that. Okay, and direct or slightly shady for them? They like the sun, don't they? At the moment, I'd bang them in the sun. Yeah, yeah. I'd get, I'd get them out in full sun at the moment because we're not, we're not getting that much of it. And when we do get it, it's not particularly hot. Um, but then again, come the end of spring, you might want to consider moving them into a bit more of a 50-50, maybe shade in the morning and over lunchtime, then bright sunlight in the evenings and going on to nighttime. Okay. And just slowly bring them into... The full sun. If you've got them in pots, it's ideal. You don't have to, you don't have to make them suffer. You can move them around and let okay. them get used to it and let them build up the, the immunity to the right sunshine and peace when they get it gets really hot where he is. Right. That sounds like a, a quite a job you've got there to um, to initiate uh, those those uh, fruit plants into the sunlight. It, it, it really it really does pay dividends. It really okay. does. Help. Yeah, great stuff. Okay, Fiona's in as well. Hey, Fiona, this year lavender struggled due to upper roots being baked, leaving them depleted. Then too much rain, sudden temperature yep. changes. I wonder if those, uh, the post dimension, that'll be Louise, that are okay, just had better protection around their upper roots in the summer. Though technically lavender doesn't need much mulching, young plants benefit in the hottest months. So it looks like Fiona knows a thing or two about uh, lavender there. Um, community gardens in Oregon here are community granges have seed saving exchanges uh, plant exchanging has community gardens sharing gardening information as well does portugal have places like a community grange i've never heard of a community grange what is that lee we we call it neighbors here Cal. oh i see okay all right <laughs> it um, like, it's like a food bank it's like a it's like a, a seed bank sorry and um, i know they started becoming quite popular in england when i was leaving where on a like a um, a Monday afternoon, you could go to your local church and swap seeds, swap yes. cuttings. Yes. Um, it's not always the best idea because um, you never really know what you're going to get. But it's also quite good fun, not knowing what you're gonna, actually going to get. Um, a box of chocolates. Okay. It is a box of chocolates. You could end up with anything when you walk out. Oh, all right. But, Thank you, Louise, for your picks. We'll get them up before the end of the show as well. Um, oh, that's, that's my... Um, my whatsapp not liking that but i will i do my best to get those onto the screen uh, before the end of the show louis so you're going to add something else there, lee i think no i just i just i think here, here in portugal it's more of a I, we kind of talked about this a little bit the man came on friday night garbo was talking about it uh, and yeah. we're still we're still doing traditional um species of tomato the the variations are just creeping in but we're, we're still using uh, what, what's the word? Not vintage, uh, but heirloom, heirloom. heirloom. Yeah, we're still using heirloom tax tomatoes here and salads, and especially the lettuces and the cabbages. They're still really old traditional types, um, but slowly and sure that's changing. So yes. people are starting to experiment more with different peas and different seeds and different beans uh, and different corn as well. I've seen quite a lot of different sorts of corn for sale. Um, that's quite a new thing for both yes. of yeah. Wow, okay, that's interesting. Great stuff. Or, I mean, there are so many wonderful plants, aren't there, to choose from if you can get access to them. It's, it's, it's interesting that people tend to stick to what they know. Oh, back in the UK, when I was doing my tomatoes on the allotment, I would always do the basic the basic cherries, uh, the tumbling toms, and then I would do a big beef tomato, and then we always did like a variation for the kids, and I've not went for colour than anything else so we've got like the color variation with the purples or the yellow and red stripy ones tiger stripes uh, just to make it more fun for the kids beautiful and when i first came here when i first started mooching around the garden centers you never saw them but they're slowly now each year becoming more and more popular yeah so it's a good thing it's a good thing 
I think Anna, you were, you were nodding in appreciation, I think, of the um, varieties, the slightly unusual varieties. I remember um, the, that uh, Seal Hain, the greenhouse, had some fantastic tomatoes in there, didn't it? Uh, yeah, I think I think I, it, it's funny. I've, I've always remembered the uh, the name Moon Glow um, tomatoes, I think, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to remember the um, other ones that we used to grow now as well as like the cherry ones and plum tomatoes all that sort of thing and uh yeah yeah i've, I've, I've definitely sort of grown lots of different um types and yeah sort of squash and um yes yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to remember it all now it's been a while but uh yeah i've certainly grown lots of different different types and yeah enjoyed just Great sort stuff. of seeing how it does question for you both for from fiona thanks fiona uh what are anna and john most looking forward to gardening wise in the coming season or year let's start with you anna um, I think I'm always, I'm always sort of um um interested in just sort of seeing all the uh, all the wildlife appearing. I think, and um, I know I think it was just a couple of weeks back. Um, I think I think we did see the um woodpecker in the first time in a while, but yeah. uh, they are a little bit um on the shy side. So any time they see movement, they take off. So um, so I haven't been able to get it on camera recently. But um, it was yeah, that was a, a first time in a um in a while i think and um yeah i think i think just sort of seeing all the all the different uh colors and um yeah i'm just uh, i think just the um amazement of how how fast everything seems to grow at the moment that um um yes yeah, so hopefully hopefully some good weather will get the color and um yeah also like seeing daffodils in the spring as well so uh yeah just seeing all the the usual plants that you usually see in, in the seasons i think Nice one. And you, John, before you go, about a minute to go before uh, we finish today on Get Out and Grow. What about you? Uh, yeah, kind of similar to Anna, really, to be honest. Um, I, th I think that's that's Anna's pretty much described uh, what I'm feeling to look forward to as well. I, I, it's quite hard to think of anything else, really. Spring, um, spring basically, then, eh? A bit of energy. Yeah, and spring, and, then, and then, then I guess we can think about bit more into summer a bit into spring yeah nice one john thank you thank you anna uh, understand if you have to leave us john it's coming up to seven o'clock let's just deal with the last couple of comments um pete does have specific cactus compost for his dragon fruit and great rich compost for the mango we did go out and get it thanks for the sunlight advice lee and the um dragon, the, the, the dragon fruit here in portugal grow really really well and they are quite an attractive cacti type of plant yeah um Apparently the fruit is gorgeous, but it's not my cup of tea. Everyone else seems to like yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, I'm not too keen. Yeah. Um, too keen. Idea no. for Pete: If your exotics are in pots, pot them on little boards with wheels. Then you can carry them uh, to the bright spots more easily. And you can that take them to the skate park as well, can't you? That is a really good idea. You can put little handles on it. You can walk yeah. and take them shopping with you. Walk yeah. around the supermarket. Yeah, sounds like perfect. A little, a little day out for Pete and his exotics. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. You're not allowed to bring your exotics in here. This is Liddles. Um, great idea, says uh, Pete uh, to Matty. Can you buy water trays with wheels? Gets kind of heavy. Well, uh, if, if you look at the commercial gardens, especially in the commercial greenhouses, you do actually put them on little trolleys. Matty, it's not to be silly you, John. there. Thanks, John. You do actually put them on small trolleys. Uh, with little coastal wheels on the bottom of them so they could be easily moved around or turned. Because a lot of plants need to be turned for the sunlight so they get full foliage. Uh, so it's not actually being ridiculous. You can buy a little trolley to fit underneath your uh, your trays. There you go. And make a little train of them and you can be at the front going choo choo um, down to the shops, Pete. Um, in my area of Oregon, coleus are annual, sadly, but in summer and fall, spectacular in pots. And a great final question from the OLP. Lee, do you make your own compost due to the poor quality in Portugal? We'll end on that. I, I, I did try to make compost in Portugal and because I've not spent enough time on it, 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 it has been quite a, a waste of my time. So we just you, find you enrich you enrich what you've got rather than make it from scratch. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, we, we've talked about this before. I, I like to bury my green waste. I like to bury it into the into the uh, veg area when needed. Uh, but even the tumbler we bought never really produced good quality compost because we get it's just too hot and I don't have the time to go to keep it wet. Um, I do have a couple of customers who have shaded areas and they can't board it and it, it's okay. 
but it's not proper. It's not proper composting like in England. It just doesn't. Yeah. It just doesn't. Do. It just doesn't. I tell you what, we've got a fantastic picture. If everyone's got a minute or so more from Matty, Matty's researched this bad boy idea that he's been talking about. Look at this. This this could double as um somewhere to um. I, I was thinking of a sort of like a bedpan commode sort oh, of yeah. situation if you need it. That's yeah. amazing, that's isn't that, it? That, that's <laughs> exactly what they, that's exactly what they use in the UK in the nurseries when they're growing up big plants. It's it's just like that. Little coaster wheels on a little tray. Yeah. And it's got a little pull out. Um, is that a reservoir or is it for putting other things in there? There's a little I've tray. Not, I've, not, I've, not, I've, not, I've not seen them with. Oh, no, you know what that is? That's to catch the uh, excess water. Okay, and then you can just yeah, tip that it slides, back. In. That, that slides it. So you've got it in your living room, you water your plant, that will catch the excess ah, water. There we then, go. Yeah. But the ones in the commercial gardens, obviously, they'll just let it leak out onto the floor in, onto a commercial greenhouse. All right. Um, but yeah, I've got. There are a lot of plants that need to be turned regular when they're going through the growth cycles, when they're getting ready for sale. Because uh, right. you want the plants to look good from all directions. Hydrangeas yes. are, are, are a real big one. If you ever worked in a nursery where you're growing a lot of hydrangeas, going around and turning the pots every third or fourth day, so the flowers develop on every side, it becomes a bit tedious. <laughs> yes. Yeah, OK. Um, we've got a couple of pictures to finish with then from Louise. Thank you for that, Matty. And Pete's delighted. Uh, he, he might need all-terrain wheels, though, rather than those little cars. He'll cause... want a solar panel on it as well. So it doesn't and a solar panel. panel. He'll, he'll yeah. want me to do it with his mobile phone and have them turn <laughs> automatically. A <laughs> couple of pics for the show this evening. <laughs> Early freezers, a Lonely White Cosmos and Rose of Garlic doing well. Let's have a look at those, shall we, before we I've go seen, this evening. I've seen, lot, I've seen a lot of Cosmos that's made it through the... As oh, well. yeah. Yeah, so a lot of made it through the winter this year. And there's the garlic already with the irrigation system in place. Lovely job, uh, Louise. And a final cartoon uh, from T Duck as well. Thank you for all your input tonight. Oh, as long as they aren't triffids moving plants and the noise the stalks make it could be quite scary, says Pete. Um, and we've been asking you what your geek dreams are for your garden 2023. We'll carry that on next week. And look, there's somebody being um, being held up by the weeds, which have completely taken over uh, in the garden there. Great job. Thank you, T-Duck, for those and the other funnies tonight. Great job, John. Great job, Anna. Thank you. And Head Gardener McGrady, of course. And we'll see you again next week. Um, final words, anybody? Or should we just play that tune? I think we're going to play that tune, aren't we? Thank Ciao for now. Bye for now. Have a great evening. Oh, um, from 7.30 this evening, I'll be on with Mama Bear McGowan and we'll be doing a webinar uh, on the GMP channels uh, looking at the a matter of life and death here in Portugal. That's what Mama Bear does. She supports people uh, towards the end of their life and we are uh, looking practically and sympathetically at death and dying. You won't be there, Lee, right? Shaking your head. Sorry, not that one. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> I've been cheering, I'm not pulling down. But... I'm taken. Bye for now. No, no she's lovely. Oh, oh, go on. Sorry, say that again. She's lovely. I'm sure it'll be an entertaining show. Yes. Well, helpful, hopefully. Um, yes. pra practically useful for the inevitable. But I understand why no, some people... Dee Dee. Dee Dee. Our friend Dee Dee, the artist. Yes. She made her mother a willow coffin, which I thought was the best thing I've ever seen. It was gorgeous. Okay. Has okay. coffin gone? Yeah. It was a really nice coffin. And completely well, biodegradable. Okay, fair enough. A willow coffin. That would keep growing as well, wouldn't it? I suspect. Incredible. All right. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, everybody, for your comments tonight. Bye for now. Ciao, ciao.